Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, um, as you know, many of you know, uh, my family, the, from my dad's side, my dad, uh, he comes from uh, 10 brothers, is it 11 brothers and sisters? And uh, this past week, my aunt went to heaven. She was only 61 years old. And she went unexpected, just like that. It wasn't like you were one sometimes. I was thinking, and I said it before, you know, when a tsunami is coming, if you, if you, if you live in Japan or if you live in um, you know, if you live in uh, Hawaii, there is, there is a siren that goes off that prepares you that something big is coming. You know, so you prepare yourself. You know, it's time to go up. Or I was pretty impressed when I was in Mexico because I'm like, we don't even have this in the States. But before an earthquake, there is a sound. The sirens go off. It gives you 30 seconds to uh, 60 seconds to get undercover. And I'm like, this is Oaxaca. And we don't even have that. So I was, as I was uh, conversing with the Lord, and I was telling him, wouldn't it be nice that, you know, we always, we prepare. You know, we prepare that, you know, things will come our way. And yes, our family is grieving. I am grieving. But one thing that God told me is like, do not allow the enemy to take what belongs to you. You know, we all grieve, and, and if you have Jesus Christ, when we grieve, we can never forget that we grieve in hope. Because we have to grieve, and I think many times we don't know how to grieve. You know that it's okay to grieve a, a relationship that maybe you had a wonderful friend, and then now that person, you, she's no longer your friend, or he's no longer your friend, and, and you miss them. Do you know that it's okay to, to do that? And I think many times we don't do that because we want to live by faith. We want to live by faith, but it's not according to the word of God because faith is facing the facts. Faith is not denying what we went through. I cannot say, no, my aunt didn't die. My aunt didn't die. No, in Jesus' name. No, she, she died. But one thing we know is that she is in heaven. One thing I know is that my God is a comforter, that he didn't leave us on this earth orphans. And I know that it is our amazing Holy Spirit that's going to come and comfort our entire family. I know that we're able to do that and we're able to, to rejoice and, and to say, God, it's still good. Let me tell you, you know that you have faith, know when everything is going well. We know we have faith when chaos comes to your house. That's when we know we have faith. And I believe that the word for 2018, if you start reading, and this is what the Lord told me, 2018 is a year of, rest, of, of a glorious resurrection. 2018 is a year of a glorious redemptive time for you and your family. 2018 is a year that is going to be a victorious year, a successful year where God is, you're going to see your families come back together. I really believe it. God always gives you a word before the problem is going to come. So what am I saying? Like, that's an awesome word. But when I, as I was, as I was sitting with the Lord, and he says, Virginia, it is your choice how you're going to enter 2018. It is your choice how you're going to leave 2017. And I was like, why? What can you choose for me? Isn't it easy to say, Lord, let your will be done? Have you ever said it? We always say it because we don't want to choose. Because it doesn't work out, we know it was the will of God. Right? It's easy because we're blaming God. It, it, the will of God. No, he's asking you tonight to choose. He says, I have given my children and to all humanity the power to choose. We all have a free will. To me, to stand here and preach is because I'm choosing to do so. Because I could be home and I can be crying and I can be like, believe me. 
I could. I did it yesterday. And it's okay. Today, I just needed to have some, something to put here because my, 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 my face was really swollen in my eyes. And somebody told me, put some spoons. And there you see me with spoons in Jesus' name. Like, <laughs> in Jesus' name, these puffy eyes. Can you see them? No, they're not, you know. But what am I saying? What I'm saying that if God is saying that 2018 is a glorious resurrection time for the church, and for the world, that means that there's a lot of places in our lives, a lot of things in our lives that they have to be put to death. You don't get resurrection power without no one dying. Someone has to die, and I'm not talking about physical death. I'm talking about things that God has been speaking into our lives, and we haven't been able to release it because it has been painful. I am it's still in awe that God would choose me to be a pastor. But now I know why. Because I have learned things the hard way. When I came to the Lord, it wasn't king is your way. No, it was a burger king in my way. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you love the king, but it, I still want it my way. I still want to, I still want expectations. This is how God is going to work. I will come and pray to God for miracles, for whatever it was. But I already had it in my mind set how it was going to happen. It needed to be this way. This is the way I want my package. And you know, to this day, he always delivers, but it's never the package that I wanted. It's never the wrapping that I wanted. But what's inside is what well worth it. I never forget when I came to, to, to do church here. And I was crying and, you know, you're obeying God. But sometimes we obey God. But we're like those children that, you, who has kids here? Especially when they're little, right? And you're like, make your bed. And, you know, they have to clean. And they're like, they're stomping and doing everything. Like, you know, as a parent, we're like, don't do it. It bothers me. Can you just do it willingly? Can you just put on a fake smile? You, you tell it to your kids because they're your kids, right? When I come into this room, I want to see a smile. And if you can hum, <laughs> be doing your bed and do something. But you know, many of us are that way. Many times that has been me. I will obey God, but I'm like, the whole time, you know, if you get looks, you roll your eyes like Jesus, like, like he's going to be moved. Oh, let me change it, Virginia. It's too uncomfortable for you. But what God wants you to choose today is that not you're only obedient, but you're willing. Because willingness has to do with your heart. That you are willing to do, you know, Father, whatever you want. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. And he wants us to contend for the faith. If we're going to enter into a new season, a new resurrection power, and I know that a lot of you here tonight, you're sitting, you're believing for your marriages, you're believing for your families, you're believing for finances, you're believing to, have to start your new, I don't know, a new business. God has spoken to you. He has given you dreams and he has given you vision but then you haven't seen anything yet and you know you by now you're disappointed I'm going to tell you the disappointed will rob you he will rob you from the promises of God how do I know that <laughs> because I've been disappointed over and over and over why because it's not because God wanted me to be disappointed no it's because I had such expectation but my expectation wasn't on the promise. My expectation wasn't on God. My expectation was on the people or how the miracle was going to take place. And this needs to be changed. And they're not meeting my standards. I don't think God is at work. But this year, and I have said it every year, but no, this is for reals. If you've been here for a while, I would say, oh, this year has been so hard. No, this year has been devastating. 
Okay, let's go a notch up. But I'm going to tell you that in the midst of chaos, I love what my daughter said, in the midst of chaos, that's where God comes in. He has, he is a professional. He's an expert at chaos. He's an expert at dysfunction. He's an expert at disappointment. He's an expert at pain. He's an expert. Many times we don't want to release that. We don't want to, we don't want to give our God our disappointments. And uh, next year, I will share my testimony of what I went through this year. But one thing I can tell you that is the best thing that has happened to my life. Because I realized after all this, even after my am passing, I realized, you know what? It is the devil that comes to still kill and destroy. And not just kill you physically. No, he wants to kill the church. You know who's the church? You. You and I were the church. He wants to kill relationship. He wants to kill marriages. He wants to kill families. He wants to divide us. He wants to steal our joy. He wants us to blame him. He wants us to be mad at him. And believe me, all those things I have done. Because I'm like, why, God, you left me. You said you were going to be there. You know what? Whenever that comes out of your mouth, that's your broken heart. That's a bitter heart, or it could be a disappointing heart, like, dang, you left me down. You said that you will never leave me, and where are you? And you know what it says, that when we're in trouble, it says in our weakness, that's when he's strongest. But we don't recognize him when he's in the midst of our storm. I'm going to tell you that if you're going through a storm, he, it's in the midst of your storm. And he's not even worried. That's why you don't hear him right now because he's just chilling. He's just waiting for you to arise and to speak to that storm and to command it to come. Be still. To your heart to be still. I believe that we're entering a year that we're going to contend for our faith. And I want you to go to, um, to Jude. Hey, Jude. No, that's not that song. Let's be honest. How, how many here have you read Jude? Thank you for your... Do you know that it's only one chapter? I encourage you, if you haven't read your Bible, start with Jude. And you can say, you know what? Thank God I started with a whole book of the Bible. Which one did you read? Jude. 26 verses. Isn't it awesome? See, I'm already giving you ideas. Verse 3 says this, beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you. And you know that word exhorting means to pressure you. Like tonight I'm going to pressure you. Well, I'm not pressuring you. God is pressuring you. So if you have a problem, you go to the boss. But he says, Pressuring you, urging you, insisting, prodding. Who likes that? Do you like to be pushed? Nobody likes to be pushed. Nobody likes to be pressured. I sure don't. But he says, I find it necessary. I find it urgent to tell you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints, the faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ was only God didn't give us his gospel in pieces. He says, once and for all, the moment that you and I accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he says, I am delivering you my whole gospel, and you need to contend for the faith. And you know that contend is a military, uh, it's a military notion. It's a, mil it's a status. This is what it means. It means to contend means get into military status, military position, and fight for the faith. And if you read it, I encourage you to read it. I was going to read all James, but, you know, like we have promised that you guys are going to be out by 815. And when my husband comes back, he's going to be here on um, Friday. I want, good, I want you guys to tell him, like, she went, she finished at 814. Because he went over the last time and we're in competition. No, I'm just kidding. We're like, let's see who stays on time. Okay, so. 
What does that mean? It says, fight for the gospel. What's our faith? The gospel. For the real word of God, the real word of God, because we, we are good at manipulating the word of God. Don't lie to me. You have, if you're married, you have manipulated the word of God once in your life. If you're a parent, you have manipulated the word once in your life. The Bible says that you have to honor. See? And we even buy, like, index cards for the poor children and honor your parents. It's a promise. And why don't you make your own index and say, stop bugging your kids? The next one is to stop. Parents, do not exasperate your children. How about we do that for us? Right? So that's manipulating because we're bringing one. You know, and then if we're married, like, the Bible says that we're one. Your body is mine. I'm, you know, we're like... I tell you what to do, how you dress, and, and you know, but we don't read our part, right? Honor your husband. So it, 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 we could. We could just say parts and bits, but the word of God is not fragmented. It's not fragmented. We love to talk about grace, but we don't want to talk about truth, and we'll talk about truth, but we don't talk about grace. That's another subject. But he says, fight content. Fight. But you know what I realized after all this that took place this year? I realized, you know, I've been contending. I've been fighting the wrong enemy. And I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about fighting your own issues. He says, I want you to fight. If you're going to fight, if you're going to get in the fight, he says, I want you to go out and nuke it out, do whatever. Get your shanker. You know what that is, right? A knife. Somebody told me that's a, that's a term for gang bankers. I didn't know that. I heard it all my life, so I didn't know that. Anyways, I have one, by the way. It's with this tiny. I should show it to you for next time. But then I thought, you know what? I've been fighting. I've been contending with anger. I've been contending with offenses. I've been contending with with disappointment. I've been contending with failure. I've been contending with betrayal. I've been contending and fighting those things. God didn't say, go and contend those things. He never told you, fight anger. It's a good fight. No, it says, be angry and yet do not sin. Right? And we're, I was going to say this word. I don't know if it's bad. Pissed off. Is that bad? Remember, I'm not from here. I'm from heaven. <laughs> That's what I always say, manipulating this, like, it's, I don't know if it's a bad word. Is it a bad word? I always say, I'm, when you know you're really upset, you're really upset. Let, let's call it what it is, right? You, you are upset, you're mad, you're like a maniac, right? And so we're fighting for these things, and then the more we fight those things, God never asked us to fight those things. The more we fight those things, the more we separate from the promises of God. The more we fight those things, the more you are letting the gospel loose. The more we fight those things, we are releasing, we are letting go of the promises of God without knowing. God says, no, you have to come back to the word of God. And the word of God never changes. Never changes. When people ask me now, like, so are you, what religion are you? I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. So people don't like it. I'm not a Christian. Yes, I am a Christian. But I love to say I am a believer and I'm a, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Guess what? Because if I'm talking to a Catholic, they're believers and they're followers of Jesus Christ. If I, you're talking to a Methodist, they are believers and followers of Jesus Christ. And then we have a common ground and then we can come together and we can talk about the word of God. Right? And we can meet and we can grow and we can settle like, no, you know, you're off. Never be like me. When I started, I was like, oh, my gosh, God, forgive me. I only have seven minutes. I'm only on page one. When I started and I was like, you know, our pastors always said, you know, you have to, you have to preach the gospel. You have to go tell them, you can tell the people. And I was like, okay, so I want to really win, you know, people. And, uh, and I was, remember I was talking to this uh, lady and, um, uh, you know, Catholic, right? So I know Catholics because I was everything. I was a Catholic. My dad was a, an agnostic, so I was part of that. And my grandma was a, a other thing, so I was part of whatever, you know? 
And then older, getting older, my aunt used to chant. She was a Buddhist, so I was everything, you know. So, but I was, now I'm like, now I have the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to win this lady. I'm going to tell him I'm going to contend for the faith. And then, so the first thing, she had her little, like, you know, you didn't have a cross, but she had a, she had, she had the crucifix. You know, we have Jesus. And I'm like, oh, no, we need to take Jesus down the, down the cross. And I started, like, contending, but I was fighting against what she believes. You know, all she wanted was prayer, but I'm like, take off that thing. If you're going to wear a cross, Jesus cannot be on the cross. Take him down. He resurrected. But was I winning that woman? No, I wasn't winning that woman. It took me forever to, and I had to go and repent and say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for trying to bring this way. And if we're going to win the world, we need to meet them. Paul said, I became everything to all men if I can win one. So what am I saying to you today? I'm saying that you and I have to contend for what's real. Why would we need to contend for? Why do we need to fight for? We need to fight for love. We need to fight to stay in unity. We need to fight to, to stop already all this grumbling and all this division and all this dissension. That's what we need to fight for. And you go back to the word of God. You go back to the word of God, no, not based on what religion. No, no, no I'm, a, I'm a Pentecostal. I'm this. No, no, you go back to the word of God. And you measure your life according to the word of God. Not according to what they are doing. Well, no, that's not the way we used to do it. We were decorating ones here at the church. And I was in charge of cutting ribbons because I love ribbons. You know, they're always fun. And so I was cutting a six, uh, was it? I think it was eight inches ribbon. So I cut it. And then uh, my job was to cut like a hundred. Right? And we have gone downtown and have bought exactly somebody, uh, like, multiply it. This is how many you have. So I didn't buy extras. So what I did was, like, I cut the first ribbon. Okay, perfect. It was, you know, eight inches. Then I cut the next one. And then instead of using the first one, I continued to use the, the new one, the newer one, the newer one, the newer one. But the time I, I need to have, like, 100 ribbons, I had, like, 80. What's my point? That if we base it in, if we don't base our life in the world, you're going to walk away from the promises of God without knowing little by little. Because you're basing your salvation, you're, ba you're basing your life, you're basing your promises in comparison with other people. Or other generations, but that's the way they did it. That's the way they got their miracle. No, no, no. God is asking you today, would you agree with me? Would you try again? Because that's what the word of God I heard the word of God to ask me and to tell you and ask you, ask them to try again. Try again. Try again to love. Many of us are closed already because people has hurt you. You, you have been hurt by people, legitimate. And God is not saying, you know, I don't understand your pain. No, he's saying, I understand your pain, but I, wanna, I want you to trust me. I'm not going to let you down. I think it's time for you to believe again. I think it's time for us to, to dream again. We're about to finish the year, and you don't want you don't want to. However was your year, I don't care if it was chaotic, was, if it was good, awesome. Then let's go from good to great. And if it was great, you're going to go from great to greatest. And if it was greatest, let's go to awesome mess. That's not a word, but you know, you get it, right? But I believe that God is speaking to you tonight. And he's asking you that he's never going to leave you, that he's never going to forsake you. And I'm going to give you two more scriptures. Romans 12, uh, 14, 12 says, Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. You know that whatever you decide to do this year, how you end this year, one day you're going to give an account on every day of our lives. Jesus even said in Matthew that out of the, of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's where our treasure is. And he says after, after that, he says, you're going to give an account on every word that you spoke. Damn women, we're in trouble. I think we speak 60 
thousand words per day. And that's when we're quiet. That's just the average. Have you met people that talk? Oh my gosh, they're like 120. Average for men, I think it's 20,000 or 17,000. You have to pull their word like, how was your day good? We want to know more. Details. Details, man. But that's their average. And we would get upset because they don't talk a lot. Well, that's their average. God created them like that. They just to be good listeners and listen to all of our stories and details. But we're going to give an account one day. And I believe that if you and I start a new year and end the new year believing, you know, starting today, I can never forget that I'm going to give a new an account on my life, every decision that I make, every disappointment that I have, every failure that I have encountered. Do not let disappointment, do not let failure, do not let pain, do not let an offense, do not let none of that separate you from what belongs to you. Don't let it. You know, it's painful, so I'd rather suffer for what is good. I told the Lord, you know, this year has been painful, but I can continue to choose to suffer and stay stuck where I've been stuck, or I can continue to suffer for the good, a good hurt. You know what? It's going to hurt me because I need to die to some places, but I'd rather be crying and in pain, but for change, for transformation, than being the same loop. I'm sick of loops. God is sick of loops. And he wants to really, he wants to touch you tonight. He wants to deliver you tonight. So he's asking you, would you believe again? Would you trust me again? I don't know what God has asked you to, ask you to do this year, but I know that all of us here, sitting here, all of us at some point in our lives, you have been disappointed, you had some pain you have some betrayals and it's been hard but God is asking you would you trust me would you would you unload this year unload it just unload it he doesn't want you carrying that into a new year and this is how we're gonna do it if this message who cares who's looking around Never be moved by the people sitting around. Oh, my God, if I stand up, if I say this, what are they going to You know, we all need to unload. We all need to let go of things. We all need to get reconciled with some people in our families. We all need to reconcile with some friends. We all need to do so many things, but we don't do it because oh, it's painful. And it's frustrating. But God is saying, don't let failures and frustrations change who you really are and who you're really meant to be for him because believe me believe me he can mold you so we're either being transformed by the word of God or we being transformed by our conditions so he's asking you he's asking you to make a choice tonight because we're gonna we're gonna finish this year right I want the resurrection power in my church I want to see when we lay hands on pe people that are sick. I want to see them get up. I want to see them be resurrected. When we lay hands and we minister to people that are dying, I want to see them come back to life. I want to see people that have depression. I want to see them free from depression. I want to see people that have been suffering anxiety. I want to see it gone like that. I want it and I want it and I want it. But you have to want it with me. You know we want it, but you know that God wants it more than you and I. He wants it more than you and I. He doesn't want another day that we spend crying. He wants us to get up. And believe me, it's painful to get up. No one say it was easy. But the gospel is simple. So it's time for you to get up. It's time for you to surrender whatever has hurt your heart. There is so many broken hearts here tonight. And, and I want everybody to close their eyes. And, but I want you to stand up. I want you to stand up and I want you to be bold and say, you know what? Yeah, my heart was broken. This year I was disappointed. 
I was expecting this, but it never happened. Actually, I've been, I've been confessing it. I've been saying it. I've been prophesying it, and I haven't seen it. But I'm going to tell you something that God told me to tell you, and I'm gonna, I know that God spoke to me. So he says, I want you to tell them this. If they choose to give it to me today, tell them that I'm not going to let them down. This is a word from heaven. I'm not going to let them down, but they have to give it to me. You cannot pick it up. You cannot pick it up. Whatever it is, you cannot pick it up. And believe me, tomorrow or when you go home, that thing is going to knock at your door and he's going to remind you, no, God hasn't done anything. No, we receive by faith. We believe with our heart. You want to confess with our mouth that no, tonight there is freedom in our hearts. Know that we are expecting an amazing, an amazing end of the year. That I'm going to celebrate and I'm going to thank God in the place that I've been. I'm going to thank God for the chaos that I've been in. You know why? Because he's going to confuse the enemy. He's going to say, what the heck? That girl should be dead. That man should be dead. That marriage should be destroyed. That family should be gone already. Guess what? We're going to confuse him. It's enough that he's been confusing us and telling us that God left us, that he's not for us, that he's against us. No, he is with us and this is not the end. This is just our beginning. So I want you, I want, we're going to surrender tonight. So I want you to lift your hands because we're going to repent. And I'm going to tell you the thing about repenting that is so awesome with God. We don't have to repent a thousand times. All we have to do is change. I'm not going to think like that anymore. I'm not going to view that situation like that anymore. So Heavenly Father, you see us. And Father, we come before you with great humility. And you said that if we humble ourselves to you, if we come before you with a humble heart, you said that you're going to heal us and you're going to heal our land. Well, what is our land? Our families, everything that belongs to us, that's our land. And Father, I'm coming to you. And we're all coming as one. We're coming before the throne of grace. And we're saying, Father, forgive us. We repent. We repent for allowing disappointment. We repent for allowing pain to change us. We repent for allowing life, Father God, to twist our thinking. And not even to see you in the midst of the chaos, Father God, when you said in your word that you've never left us. And you will never leave us. We leave you. You never leave us. You're the one who, who is after us constantly. And God says, he's, he's telling you tonight, he says, I'm unapologetic for my love to you. Do you understand? No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, he says, I love you, 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 I love you. And my word does not return to me void. So if you agree with me tonight, we're saying yes to God. Yes, Lord, we're going to finish this year. I declare, Father God, that tonight, Father God, things are being broken off our lives. And we're releasing unforgiveness, Father God. We're releasing all the pain, all the disappointment. We're releasing our depression and our anxieties and all of those issues that has plagued us all these years, Father God. We release them, we give them to you, and we don't want them back. We return them where they, where they belong. You did that for us on the cross, Father God. You died for us so we can live a life full of joy in the midst of our pain. That we could be grieving but with hope. So, Father, I pray for every family here tonight. And I declare and I confess and I make a declaration over their lives, Father God, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every person here tonight, over their minds, over their hearts, and I declare wholeness and healing taking place, Father God, so we can win the world, so we can, we can be the light that you have called us to be, so we can be those people that we're just so in love, Father God, with you. We're so in love with you, Father God, that we are not going to be shaken. We're going to contend for what you have called us to contend. We're going to fight for love. We're going to fight to stay in unity. We're going to fight, Father God, 
to have joy. We're going to fight to believe. We're going to fight to conquer, Father God. And in this moment, Father God, I break the spirit of fear and I command it to leave in Jesus' name. No more fear. Fear that you won't come through. No, I rebuke the lie. I rebuke you, devil. You're a liar. Ezekiel said that one day when we present ourselves to God, we're going to see the man. We're going to see that little thing called Satan. And it's in Ezekiel and he says that we're going to see him and we're going to see him and he's so insignificant. And we're going to see, what? Is this the one who ruined my life? Is this the one who made me run from my call? Is this the one who made me give up and, and quit on my family? This is the one? No, greater is he who lives in us than he who lives in the world. He is greater. There is a hero that lives inside of you. There is a hero that lives inside of you. And who is that? That Jesus. We have his Holy Spirit. So, Father, we receive it. And we thank you. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.